All right, guys, we're starting off with section two. Um, the timeline that we're going to be following for the first few topics of section two is from 1905 onwards to 1919. The important event, uh, the first most important event um, is the partition of Bengal of 1905. Um, if you just want to look at the series of events, you can, you can note it down. I'll write it here on the screen. Um, first of all, in 1905, it is the partition of Bengal. Nineteen oh six is the Sindha deputation. These are all the important events that we're going to be studying in this timeline here. Mm -hmm. Nineteen oh uh, nine more limento reforms. Nineteen eleven reversal of Bengal partition. Um, then nineteen sixteen Lucknow Pact. Nineteen nineteen Montfort reforms. And finally, again in 1919, the Rowlett Act. Yeah, so this is a timeline that we're following for these couple of years. Partition of Bengal is the first most important event. I'm going to switch the screen back to notes here. So, okay. Now we've established how the British had arrived in India, how they had expanded their control. Uh, Mughal Empire had declined properly now, and EIC, after getting involved in the political subcontinent, was no more directly controlling the political system of India. The British Parliament was now in control. India was officially the colony of uh, the British. Swadeshi movement was sort of a, a movement formed by the Hindus that wanted the self-rule. Self-rule is that because the British, they were trying to divide the people of the subcontinent, we're going to talk about how in the partition of Bengal, the British, uh, Bengal was one of the most important provinces of India in terms of the wealth, uh, the natural resources it had, and the British, they, the first step they took was to divide it into two parts, the East and the West Bengal. Hindus felt uh, threatened because one of the parts of, the, of, the, of Bengal was given to the Muslim. Uh, the Muslim population. Okay, so this part, this this Swadeshi movement was formed in response to the partition of Bengal. Hindus basically formed this movement here, and they it was I mean this movement was a boycott of British goods, and bought only Indian produced goods. British sugar, salt, and clothes especially suffered, and cotton in particular. British cloth was burned on bonfires. People picketed the shops sell, selling foreign goods. So it was sort of a boycott movement against the British, a non-corporation movement, where the uh, Hindus decided to boycott all of these international products that were inflowing in the Indian markets, cotton, uh, spices, sugar, salt, and everything. Um, yeah. Next, there's a 14 mark question. The reasons for the partition of Bengal. So we're gonna study the reasons for this partition through this question here. Now we need to understand why did the British take this decision in the first place? Why was the Bengal partitioned? Uh, let's look at these reasons. Number one was the geographical reasons that Bengal, you guys, you can just keep writing down pointers for this. Instead of writing the entire paragraphs, just note down the points, the main reasons that were for the partition of Bengal. And I'll read out the explanations from here. So Bengal was a huge province and there was a poor way, there were poor ways of communication between the western and the eastern part of Bengal. Moreover, the eastern part was underdeveloped. Bengal was such a large area that it became difficult to rule it. It was also not easy to have quick access in case of national disasters and rebellions. Therefore, the British decided to partition Bengal so that important matters of this area could be handled with ease. 
So because of the large area, because of the lack of communication, lack of uh, coordination between the Eastern and the Western governments, British thought that it was better to divide it into two parts so that the administrations of the East and the West part could manage their provinces separately. Yeah. Another reason was the high population. There was very high population in Bengal, which made it almost impossible for the British to run the government with efficiency over there. British themselves had divided their own country into different zones, hence they decided to partition Bengal, not only to make the administration and management stronger, but to address serious issues quickly and efficiently. So they're following this political system, this divide and rule policy, similar to what they were, what they had in Britain. And um, this is what they did here because of the larger population, it was obviously more efficient to uh, to allocate different governors and um, you could say different rulers for those separate parts so they could manage their people uh, more efficiently. Hindu opposition. Partition of Bengal had created resentment among the Hindus and they started criticizing and opposing the British. The British wanted to eliminate any kinds of opposition that might be a threat to their rule in India. Also, the Hindus were a major part of Bengal. Okay, so what happened was um, because Hindu, you, you could say that the Hindu power was growing by the time. Oh, yeah, don't just, um, I mean, I, I don't think it's wise to write about this Hindu opposition as an aftermath of the partition of Bengal in this place because we're, all, we're already answering this question that is the reasons for the partition of Bengal. So, what you could say instead of the text that's written here in this paragraph, what you could say is that um, because the Hindus they were cooperating with the British, they were accepting all the ideas, and they, I mean, it, it was felt that their power was kind of growing in the subcontinent and British, they wanted to counter that power. And Hindus, they had a majority in one of the sides of Bengal. So what the, I mean, the British thought that it's better if we divide the Bengal and counter the Hindu, growing Hindu power through this divide and rule policy. Obviously Hindus will no longer be in power in the entire Bengali province. Muslims had one of the, uh, I mean, Muslims got a majority province uh, under their control directly after this partition. So this could be one of the reasons to counter the Hindu opposition, to counter the uh, growing power of Hindus in the subcontinent. And obviously, right after the War of Independence, it was important for the British to, uh, I mean, they did take immediate actions after the War of Independence as well, but the way Hindus had uprised against the British and the British did lose control in, of, of some of their territories, it was important for them to counter the growing power of the locals as well. Another reason which led to the partition of Bengal was the power, okay, Hindus along with Muslims. Okay, now this idea of nationalism was a threat to the British. So the word Indians, we use it for the entire Hindu and the Muslim population of India, of subcontinent. And then we refer to these populations separately according to the religions, Hindus, the Muslims, the Sikhs. But altogether, they were all the Indians. And Indians, um, they... I mean, obviously, this growing nationalism amongst the Indians was a, a threat to the British over, uh, at that time. Um, so British were worried that the rule might come to an end of, the, of this nationalism grew. Uh, it was important for them to even divide the Hindus and the Muslims further. Although, yes, the Hindus, the Muslims, they had their own differences. Uh, but together, but they had this one common opposition, the British. And this was a threat to the British, right? So it was important that they divided the Indians as well. By dividing the, by partitioning Bengal, what they achieved was one province with an entire Muslim majority and the other with an entire Hindu majority. And the Indians were no longer united in terms of the geog geographical areas they were residing in. So yeah, they were successful in uh, stopping this growing nationalism. The partition of Bengal was necessary as issues had arisen in ruling provinces. The Bengal was larger than England itself and only one lieutenant governor was responsible for ruling it. There was, there was a huge burden over uh, the ruler of Bengal. That is why Bengal was partitioned to reduce the administrative burden. Oh yeah, simple, very simple. Lord Curzon was a British ruler who was famous because of administrative and reforming skills. The previous rulers such as Lord Edhousey uh, had a lot of complaints regarding the rule of Bengal uh, uh, and the burden on the governor 
keeping those complaints in mind, he was forced to divide Bengal as part of the reforms for this region. Okay, again, another reason was the complaints against the governor of Bengal. Uh, so British thought that it was, I mean, it was fair that they divided the province and obviously reduced the burden on the governor himself. Uh, Western Bengal was well developed, whereas eastern part was underdeveloped, and the people living in there were backwards in every way. Moreover, the people of East Bengal were not treated well by the Hindus, and the British decided to partition Bengal so that East Bengal could be developed and make progress in different fields. So the eastern part was under the Hindu control. Yeah, I mean, yes, even before the partition, Hindus were in majority in the eastern part, and Muslims were in majority in the western part. The Hindus weren't treated really well. Um, after these issues, after these concerns, what the British thought was that it's better to divide Bengal and give one of the sides under Muslim control, and people must have this liberty to choose whichever place they wanted to live in. Okay. And there could be another reason as well, one last reason. Uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you can consider that uh, because it's not written here, so I'll, I'll suggest you guys just Keep a note of that. You can, you can write it down. British might, because you see, since the time of the War of Independence, the British had blamed Muslims for the war, for the uprisings. And it might be a reason that, I mean, it, it could be possible that they might want to improve their relations with the Muslims by giving them a majority, by giving them an area to rule themselves. So yeah, this could be another reason. Guys, is there any question so far? No, sir. Okay. So right after the partition of Bengal, there was resentment among the Hindus. Why? Because the Hindus were in majority uh, before the partition. And after that partition, the Muslims were also ruling one of the parts. The Western Bengal was un entirely under the Muslim control. So British could see these worsening relations with the Hindus. They, they, they started these non-cooperation movements. The Hindus started boycotting British goods. They started the Swadeshi movement, which is a self rule movement. They wanted the British out of India because um, it was a threat to the in Muslim rule, of, uh, so the Hindu rule, obviously. Muslims, however, on the other side, was they were very satisfied because after, I mean, years of blaming and these blame games, they had finally gotten this majority. They had finally gotten a chance to further improve the relations with the British. They, 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 uh, they, they understood that British were trying to improve these relations with the Muslim community. They were trying to make them feel accepted uh, and noticed, recognized. So yeah, all of these reasons. The, I mean, this these were the consequences for these for this partition. Um, I mean, in the Hindus, on the other hand, because they had taken extreme measures, they were attacking the British. They had started these non-cooperation movements. British, uh, the economy was suffering because uh, they had launched these civil disobedience movements to boycott these these British products in the Indian markets. So British had to take some uh, measures to put these down. And when the British they used force against the Hindus, the relations further worsened and British had to take this decision to reverse the partition of Bengal. In 1911, the partition of Bengal was reversed. Um, and obviously, um, reasons let, let's 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 look at the reasons number one the swadeshi movement partition of bengal had created resentment among the hindus and they formed the swadeshi movement the movement started to promote and patronize uh, hindu gods and started the boycott of british gods therefore the boycott of british gods put a lot of economic pressure over the british which forced them to reverse the partition of bengal another reason was that the the attacks on the british hindus they started these bomb blasts in India, uh, they were killing the British officers, there was an assassination attempt on Lord Minto, the voice of India at that time. So this threat of terrorism, the assassination attempts, the conflicts grew, which is why British, in order to put these rebellions down, in order to maintain or um, you could say, yeah, maintain the peace and stability of the province, it was important for them to take this difficult decision to reverse the partition. 
Hindus wanted to get support of Muslims who thought so for Swadeshi movement and wanted them to shut down their shops and to do a strike. However, the Muslims refused to favor the Hindus as they were happy with the parts of Bengal. Hindus were angered by this and they started attacking the Muslim shops as well. So yeah, because the Hindus had started the civil disobedience and, with, and they were expecting uh, that the Muslims would also support them in that because obviously uh, when it comes to the opposition against British, the Indians were all together. They were united. But this time, I mean, it wasn't the same because the Muslims were happy with the partition. And opposition, opposing British meant that Muslims were again trying to anger the British somehow, right? So this clash between the Hindus and the Muslims, uh, it resulted in a very deteriorated law and order situation in India. This chaos, these conflicts, they had to be put down to British, they reversed this partition. These were the three reasons. Uh, the question now is that were the reasons for the partition of Bengal were more important? Were these reasons more important than its reversal? Do you agree? So this is a 14 mark question asking you to write about the reasons for the partition as well as reasons for the reversal. So how you need to, you need to attend this question, like you can write four points for the reversal sorry, for, for the partition, and then three points for the reversal. This is the appropriate format for writing this question. On level three, you're going to write four points for the partition. On level four, you'll be writing three points for the reversal, and then an evaluation at the end, supporting that the reasons for the partition were more important than the reasons for the reversal. Is there any question regarding the pattern? Because you'll be attempting this question as an assignment. So if there's any confusion, you can ask right now. No, sir. Okay. All right. Now we're moving on to these next events. Simla deputation of 1906, Muslim League, Monumental reforms, Lucknow Pact, Monfort reforms, Raul attack, and the Amritsar tragedy. 1906, this another important event took place that was the Simla Deputation. And regarding, let's let's look at this part A, what was Simla Deputation first of all? So Simla Deputation was a meeting between the Muslims and the British. I, I mean, if you look at the, and the Simla Deputation took place exactly after the partition of Bengal. So now let's roll back in time. Imagine the British had just partitioned Bengal. They were, they were just, there was just some opposition from the Hindu side. Muslims were really happy. They were, uh, I mean, the relations were really good with the British. So right after the partition, a year after that, in 1906, British, sorry, Muslims, they took advantage of their um, good relations with the British. They sent a delegation under Sir Aga Khan uh, so, uh, to, to the British for some more reforms. They demanded separate, separate electorates. They demanded more weightage with the Muslims and councils and assemblies. Uh, and these demands were accepted by Lord Minto. Um, this was another success. And it was also a very important point for the uh, Muslim British unity. And this was the high time that the British and Muslims were in really good terms. Sir Al Khan was the uh, 48th Imam of Ismailis. His real name was Sultan Muhammad Shah. He was the he was the founder uh, and the president of Muslim League. He was the leader of Muslim delegation and similar deputation. So the similar deputation was sent under the leadership of Sarah Khan. Okay, Muslim. Okay, now after the similar deputation, um, you could see that the Muslims they were progressing politically. Finally, they um, had. I mean, they were on good terms with the British. They were finally being recognized by the British. Their demands were accepted. They had more electorates now. They had more weightage in the councils and the assemblies. So they thought that it was high time that they develop uh, their own political party. In 1906, Muslims, they established their own political party, Muslim League, especially for the propagation of Muslim rights. Uh, because, okay, so Muslims felt, I mean, the, the Indian National Congress was already there, right? So, I mean, and it was established to protect the rights of the Indians, both the Hindus and the Muslims. But the Muslims felt that the Indian National Congress was Hindu dominated. And all of the um, policies that were designed by the Congress were uh, mostly favoring the Hindu community. So this was one of the reasons as to why they developed their own political party, Muslim League in 1906. 
let's look at their reasons. This is a 14 mark question. Was Muslim League established in nine, the Muslim League was established in 96 because the most Hindus had their own political party. So this is what I told you that this was one of the reasons. But was it the only reason for the formation of Muslim League? Let's look at the answer. Congress, okay, so on level three, you're explaining the establishment of Congress and how it became a reason for the establishment of Muslim League. Congress was a political party which was formed by Hindus to promote and defend the rights of all the other cultures and religions. However, later on, it was found that the Congress was dominated by Hindus who only wanted to fulfill their own demands and wishes. Congress was no longer reliable and the Muslim League needed to form their own political party. To explain their issues and demands to the British, all right, this is why the Muslim League was established. Hindu dominancy, Muslims felt that they were not represented properly by the Congress. This is why they needed their own political party. Similar deposition, uh, okay, we just talked about similar deposition. The demands were accepted. And how did similar deposition become a reason for the um, formation of Muslim League? Look at these bold lines. Similar deposition encouraged the Muslims to organize themselves and form their own political party to take part in the electoral process. This led to the formation of Muslim League. Simple, it was an encouragement for the Muslims because they were on good terms. They thought that it's the, I mean, it's the right time to have their own political party as well. Muslims were disunited. Again, Muslims, they wanted, they needed to have a political party. They needed to have a common goal because you see, when you work under a political cause, it's like working for a common goal. It's like working for your common objectives. And obviously the Muslims thought that it would serve as a uniting factor for the Muslims in India. So this is why the Muslims decided to protect their rights and obviously through this formation of a political party. Um, Hindus, they, had, they didn't really have a good attitude towards the Muslims. Uh, there were some organizations um, that were converting the Muslims to Hinduism. And they, I mean, they had also, they also wanted the, I mean, they wanted Hindi to be, to, to be the official language. We did talk about this in Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan's chapter as well, the Urdu Hindi controversy. The Hindus, they always wanted Hindi to be the official language of India. Muslims wanted Urdu uh, because of the political conflict here. And it was, I mean, obviously it was important to officially protect the language. And that could only be done through a political party, a political party that could pass laws uh, protecting the language, pass laws to protect their culture. Um, all right, so this is why the Muslim League was formed. Partition of Bengal now because the British had partitioned Bengal because of all of these administrative reasons. And Hindus were, I mean, opposing British on a very large scale. And Muslims, when they saw these protests by the Hindus, when they saw these large scale of the, the this large scale opposition, they were they were somewhat concerned that uh, Hindus might, um, I mean, uh, oppose the Muslims uh, the same way, or or let's say if they, um, if if they let's say if they're successful in um, getting their rights approved, getting their uh, policies approved, all of those things might turn against the Muslims, against the interest of the Muslims, right? So it was important for the Muslims to protect their interests. We're talking about 1906, guys. Right after 1905, the formation of Muslim League. Uh, for now, the partition wasn't reversed. It was just Bengal was just partitioned a year ago. Hindus had campaigned against that partition. Muslims had seen everything that was going on, and they were concerned that this level of uh, opposition Muslims could never maintain. They, they could never uphold such level of opposition, and it was important for them to right away protect their interests. So you see, they were afraid of the reversal. They were afraid of these policies against the Muslims. And that this is exactly what happened. The British, they, they, were, they were pressurized by the Hindus to an extent that they had to reverse the partition in 1911. And this is what the Muslims were afraid of. Uh, and yeah, so this is why they thought it was important to have a political party. Another reason was to develop good relations. Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan had always worked for developing a good a relationship with the British. Muslim League was formed to spread political awareness to Muslims about British policies and spend them or improve their relations with them. Okay, another reason for the formation of Muslim League was the policies introduced by the Liberal government in the UK. Um, the, the, there was this change of government in the England at that time uh, and the, this new Liberal government introduced a new policy in India, which was based on pure democracy to hold these elections in India. 
And in order to take part in the electoral process, it was important for the Muslims to have their own political party that could represent their demands, that could represent their population. And uh, obviously, without a political party, it was definitely not possible for the Muslims to take part in this process. And then, guys, there needs to be an evaluation, agreeing to which reason you think was the most important for the formation. Any questions? Okay. No, okay. So we were keeping it till here. Um, I'm sending you an assignment to do. So you'll be given with two questions. Number one, guys, please note it down. The first question is, this one here, the reasons for partitioning Bengal were more important than its reversal, do you agree? 14 months? So I can't see your screen. Really? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Note this question down, please. And secondly, if you've noted this down, the next question that you should attempt is this one here. The Muslim League was established in 1906 because the Hindus had their own political party in year 2014. You have these notes. The notes have already been uploaded in the, in, on, on the Google Drive. I hope everyone has access to that drive, please. If you have it, so just, just study the notes in there, but please try to write your answer. Sir, in can you move? Sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, very much access in the Google Drive. Um, okay, up Muji up now, email send her do group name. Yeah, okay, sir. Access it. Okay. All right, uh, so these two questions are, and the submission is uh, 10 p.m. Pakistan standard time. Guys, please make sure to submit your answers timely because I, when I said these submission deadlines, they are for you to attend the question at nine so I can get a bit, so I can get time to even go through your answers. Okay. Because otherwise, my schedule is so tightly packed that I don't really get time to read your answers. 10 p.m. Pakistan time, so, that, so right after 10, I can go through your answers um, and give you a timely feedback on, on the responses. Okay. Uh, let me know if there's any question. And please focus on, I mean, just, just write these answers in your own words and write proper evaluations as well. All right, so that is it. We're going to end the meeting now.